Hey, what's going on guys? Vexane here, back with another Sony Vegas Pro tutorial. So today I'm going to show you how to create a really simple sky replacement effect. And I will be showing you how to do that in Sony Vegas Pro 17, but this will work in any older versions of Vegas back as old as Vegas Pro 13. So hopefully you guys do enjoy this one. It is some use to you. Remember if you do, please don't forget to leave a like down below or even consider subscribing. Those things just really help out the channel and show your appreciation for the content. And now without further ado, let's jump straight into Vegas and we'll get on with the tutorial. Okay, so here we are, we're in Vegas. I've just got a blank project and I've imported my clip. Now, as always, before we get started, we're gonna go file and go properties. I'm just gonna check some of our project settings. So for me, the clip I'm using is a 1080p clip, which is gonna be 1920 width by 1080 height. That's gonna be what most of you wanna use. You always wanna set the field order to none, progressive scan, and the frame rate to 60 FPS. And of course, as always, you also want to hit disable resample. Now, when you've made sure that all these settings are correct, they all match the footage you're using, you can just hit apply and then hit OK. So for this tutorial, we're going to need to use four video layers. So what we're going to do is right click over here on the left and hit insert video track, insert video track, and just keep going until you've got four tracks here. And what we're going to do is get our clip and then put that over here on the second from the top video layer. Now what we're going to do is go over to Media Generators and then go over to the Vegas tab, go to Solid Color. And you just want to pick a color that is a nice bright contrast to your footage. So I'm going to pick this green and put this over here on the bottom layer and just hit Close. And this is just going to be a stand-in for our sky, which we're going to put in later. And it'll just allow us to get a clearer contrast when we're trying to make our key. So now you're going to do is go and hit the effects button on your footage and you want to go again over to the Vegas tab. You want to find Vegas levels, hit add, and then go find Vegas chroma key, hit add, and then hit OK. And then what we're going to do is, as you can see, the chroma key by default is set to blue and it's already having an effect on our footage. So we're just going to disable that for now. And then the levels, what we're going to use this for is we want to create a better contrast between our sky and the background. So we're going to make our footage look quite strange. It's not going to look particularly natural, but that doesn't matter. We're just trying to get that contrast. So the input start, I'm going to lift. And you can see we get deeper blacks. And then input end, I'm going to lower below the input start. And you can see your footage will inverse. And then as you can see here, we get this great bright red contrast with our background, which is all black and it'll just allow us to key it a bit easier. I'm trying to remove any artifacts like this up here. So what you're trying to get is a solid color across the whole sky. So just change these until you get that. So just wanna make sure you get that balance between the two. That looks just about perfect. And once we're done with that, we're gonna go over to our chroma key. And again, we're just trying to get a key right now. So it doesn't matter that the footage is all you know, totally ruined basically, because we're going to fix that later. So go over to Chroma Key. Now we're going to start editing the settings before we've actually enabled it. So we're going to go Color, select the Eyedropper tool, click on the sky, and just select that color. And then now once we've done that, we can enable it. And you can see right away, the green comes through. So what we've got here is we've cropped out the layer. We basically created a mask and you can see our green layer shining through below. And then this just low and high threshold. You can tweak these two until you get it looking good. What you're trying to do is remove any artifacts that may appear. Like up here at the top of the sky, we've got some, you know, sort of dark gray pixels showing up. Just want to tweak the settings until they totally disappear. If you are having some trouble with getting a nice key, you can soften it a bit with the blur amount. 0.005 works pretty well. It's just a really faint, soft blur. And for me, the default settings actually look pretty good. So I'm just gonna leave them like that. And then once we're done, once you've got the key really nice, we can hit show mask only. Now this will show us any little imperfections that we've missed. So you can see here in the middle of my clip, there's a little green patch here. Don't worry about these just yet. I'll show you how to fix them a little bit later. So just ignore it for now. And that's pretty much it, it's perfect. So we're just gonna hit close. And again, remember, make sure you've checked show mask only. So now we've basically, we've got our key, we've got the outline we want, but obviously our footage is gone. 
So what we need to do is we need to make a child layer with the original clip, but a lot of you guys won't have these buttons showing up by default. So what we're gonna do is hit this menu over here, the more options, then go down to edit visible button set. And what we're gonna do is enable track motion, enable compositing mode, enable compositing parent and compositing child. Click all of them, hit okay, and you'll see a bunch more buttons show up now. So once we've done that, drag your clip, just a fresh version of it, down to the third layer, hit make compositing child, and then go back to the first clip we edited, and then set the blending mode on that to multiply mask. And as you can see straight away, footage comes through, it's you know how it's supposed to look, and all of the things we did with the levels aren't showing up anymore. But of course, we still do have these little artifacts here, a little bit of green showing through. So in order to fix that, we're gonna drag another fresh version of the clip on, put it on the first layer, click on the event pan crop button over here, and all we're gonna do is create a mask, select a rectangle, and then just select the bottom half or so of your footage. So our little green bit that was showing through was right here about halfway. So just make sure the rectangle is above that, but make sure it's clearly below your skyline. And all this is doing is it's basically just filling in the bottom half of the footage below the skyline to make sure no bits of green are peeking through. So with that, the effect is pretty much complete, but you probably don't want to be using a solid bright green sky. So what we're going to do is go down here and just delete that layer, and then we'll get this solid black. And then I'm just going to drag in my sky texture and put it on that layer where the green was. Now you'll probably see it doesn't line up super well. So we're gonna hit the track motion button that we enabled earlier, and we can just move that until it fits. And you can select the corner to scale it if need be, or scale it the other way, and just get it to fit nicely with your footage. So with that, if we close this, I'm gonna go back to the original effects, and at this point, this is where you can tweak the key a bit, just to get the settings just perfect. And then we're gonna add a little bit of blur. And you can just, you know, spend as much time as you like on this, trying to get it really perfect. Just like that. And we've got a nice crisp key along the edge here. So if we go back to the beginning of the clip and we just hit play, as this plays through, you can see I've got our sky effect coming in. Really great effect, really nice crisp key, worked really well. And that's pretty it, it's that easy. So that is it, that is the sky replacement effect we've created, really quite easy, only takes a few steps. And once you've completed this, if you wanna add further color correction or edits to the footage, you can just go export all of this as an MP4, bring it back into the project and edit it that way. So hopefully this tutorial has helped you guys, hopefully you have enjoyed it. If it has, please don't forget to leave a like down below or even consider subscribing to the channel. Those things really help out and really just show your support for this content. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.